Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another 3D Hangout. You got myself, Noir Wes. I'm a designer here at Adafruit. And joining me every week, Brother Pedro. What's up, everybody? I'm Pedro Wes, creative tech here at Adafruit. And every week, we come to share 3D printing projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. This is the show where we combine 3D printing, DIY electronics, we smash them together and make inspirational projects for you folks. Welcome wow. back, everybody. That's right, we've got another awesome show for you today. Start okay. off with, what are we prototyping? Coupon code, this... <laughs> Coupon code for this week, Pit Boy, to get 10% off your purchase from off of Adafruit. That's right. Um, it's good till 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time, and it'll work with just about everything in the Adafruit shop, excluding software and gift certificates. That's right, we still got good deals going on. $200 That's right. and more, you get free shipping and half-size Prima Proto board. Yep, 200 bucks. Buy a printer, get free shipping. If you're a lucky resident of the NYC, you get same-day delivery if you put your order in uh, before 11 a.m. Eastern Time. That's right, you get it uh, around 5 in the afternoon. Okay, programming note, we still got Adafruit Daily. We got the newsletters for you guys, so if you want to get some daily tips in your inbox, Adafruit Daily is how to do it. All right, AdafruitDaily.com is the place to go to sign up. You can sign up for biohacking, wearables, electronics, ma make your business. business. Biz. And of course, 3D printing. Oh, yeah. So definitely check that out. And thank you guys for subscribing because it's really cool. Mm -hmm. All right. What are you prototyping this week, folks? Let's go ahead and jump right into it. This week's project is the Pip Boy 3000 <laughs> Mark IV using the Raspberry Pi. I actually have the Raspberry Pi B Plus in this one here, and it is finally finished. You guys saw this a couple of months ago. I think I started in November. I'm going to disconnect this because I've been charging the battery. But that's the cool thing. You can recharge your battery. It's got the 2200 milliamp battery here in this lovely cylindrical case. Um, and you see the wire here. It gives it that extra like steampunk look to it. You got an on-off switch, power boost 1000C here. That's the other half of it. So if I wanted to put it on, I could, uh, I'll put it on later. But that's how it snaps on. It's using a magnet. Uh, a couple, it's like 16 magnets, I think. But they're those really strong neodymium magnets. Um, this is the 3.5-inch the Pi TFT. And uh, we got the, the rotary switch working here, so you can switch between different uh, modes. They're a little empty, but the, the cool thing about this is that you can modify, you can add as many features as you want to the program. Shout out to Graves and Sabbath uh, 2080, and also um, uh, our, our residential Python master, Tony D himself, helped us out getting this working, which is pretty cool. It's a, it's a 10 position. Um, analog radial switch, so that's how that's working. The encoder is one of those things that we hope to implement in the future. Um, so if you guys um, know a little bit about Python and want to get this working, let us know. Fork the, the repo, open source software. It's using Pygame, of course. Um, and it'll fit uh, most arms. I got a lot of this uh, installation foam in there, so it, it fits on my arm. And a lot of the details, like the little LED here and all the little um, fox gauges and things really make this thing look pretty cool. So that's this week's project. Pretty cool. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it off because <laughs> the battery is going to die on us. But um, it is touch screen, so I can touch right here and get the cursor to work if it, if it wants to. I haven't calibrated my touch screen, you can see there. Um, but yeah, it's pretty interesting. I got the um, sound effects board in there, so we can hear um, the background music from Fallout 4. So I can, I can play Fallout 4 and have this here and um, be all in style. Also got the um, Wi-Fi dongle and the, a dongle for a keyboard. So you can actually have this with your fancy Kano keyboard or keyboard that we have in the Adafruit shop and program away at it. So that's about it. Um, yeah, so let me guys know what you think about it. Hope you guys enjoy it and modify it to your contents. The, of course, the, uh, the Fusion 360 file is available. Or you can cut it up uh, if you want to fit it on your printer. It's actually going to fit on most uh, bigger 3D printer uh, platforms like the FlashForge Creator Pro, of course, the Ultimaker, uh, the Type A machine. And I think it's a little bit too big for the printer bot. Simple metal, but you could cut it in half to get that thing going. Um, so there you go. Pip Boy 3000. Very cool. And I think it's one of the coolest wearable Raspberry Pi cases around if that's all you want to use it for you can definitely Absolutely. If, as really you've seen this. in the video you can wear it while you're typing away and that's right it's gonna be a little comfortable fit. cool all right well there you go um let me put that under there other stuff we're prototyping what are we actually prototyping this week um sort we'll of do that and then a, this oh yeah or do that first yeah remember the the pocket uh, the, the I even i'm even saying the pocket pie girl um, I just want to give you guys a quick update. So last week I sanded down. Uh, this is, of course, the Pi Girl 2 case. Um, I cut this in half 
printed it on two of our small printers, uh, the PrinterBot Play and the M3D. So I used E6000 to glue them together, and I sanded it down for a good, I don't know, 15 to 20 minutes maybe, it if takes that. takes a little bit. Yeah, that's not long at all, actually. And I went ahead and put some uh, smooth on XTC 3D epoxy resin coating. So mm -hmm. I have one, well, just one coat of it. It's already looking really shiny and smooth. But I can, I, what I forgot to do is use a little bit of alcohol to get rid of those excess uh, sort of goopiness from the E6000 adhesive. But it still fits out really well. Um, the tolerances work out really well. Um, so if you want to print it on a smaller printer, you totally can. The, the next uh, week, I will probably sand it down again, put some filler primer from Rust-Oleum, and then spray paint it with some nice um, colored fluorescent color or something interesting. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I'll leave it black. I don't know. I think the black color I think will I be like nice black. on it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just do it with a glossy uh, black. Yeah. And yeah. It's nice to know that all the tolerance, the dimensional accuracy off of a smaller printer and combining it um, yeah. four pieces works out perfectly. So if you have a smaller printer, you still can get on the action, get yourself a kit, and build yourself an awesome Super Nintendo um, Raspberry Pi 2. Yeah, Pi Girl, Girl 2. Um, quick update on the, um, the, the kit. We're still working really hard to get that together for you folks. We're trying to get everything in stock before we um, make the kit. So mm -hmm. that's coming for you guys. Hopefully next week we'll let you know, of course. And um, yeah, keep keep your eye out on the social media channels. For of course, we'll be drops. blasting it as soon as it is released. So oh yeah, definitely t keep an eye out for that. So that's a quick update to the Pi Girl Two. Very cool. All right, Vernoy Fever this week. Vernoy Fever has caught on. I started doing the Vernoy uh, stool, which we showed off I think last week, and then Buddy Alex Hatch came up with a very cool workflow using Grasshopper on Rhinoceros on the Mac OS platform. And did um, very cool with ZBrush, did a very cool little um, Pac-Man Ghost Veronoi. Yeah. I'm really like, really enjoying the, the way he got this across. And then yeah, the way you figured out workflow. some very cool workflows for using Fusion and Mesh Mixer yeah. um, to uh, do some other cool Veronois on these little guys here. Talk about a little bit about your awesome update sure. to the lampshade. Yeah, well, people don't know about the lampshade. This week's layer by layer, it's going to bleed into that. Is uh, uh, how did, how did just a quick workflow on how to make a parametric lampshade and then bring that into Mesh Mixer uh, to apply this pattern, the Vernoy type pattern. You do got to do a little bit of brushing and artistic, you know, stuff to it. But I go over all the steps on how to do that. You can apply it to a lot of different things. Uh, this was a little bit more, uh, a little bit more work than actually this. So this is actually from Flow Flowlistic. Um, Thingiverse user and designer uh, from France. Um, you'll you'll recognize his work. He's done all the Pokemon, low polygon Pokemon. Mm -hmm. So this is Squirtle. So I imported his model, and I dropped it into um, to Mesh Mixer three. Mesh Mixer three guys, check that out if you haven't already. Update your Mesh Mixer. It's free update from Autodesk. And using the pattern tool, I was able to really make this really quick. The only other edit that I made was, of course, use the flat, the plain cutter to make this flat, so I can print on the bed. No support material. So a little bit about what printer and how to get such a phenomenal parent. Pedro, start with yours. Yeah, so this was printed on the M3D. Uh, one of the things that I changed on this, it's uh, the Bring it retraction closer. length on this is uh, 1.5 millimeters. We have a vertical lift of 0.2. Oh. And that's to keep away from the spokes so it doesn't like bump into it. Mm, um, okay, the retraction important. speed is, I believe, 30 millimeters for the retraction speed. And the layer height on this is actually 0.25, and it looks pretty good. Yeah, wow. And it's, of course, it's nice and strong. It's not going to, you know, break apart. Right, it doesn't just crumble in your hands. Yeah. So I'm pretty surprised that I was able to print on that um, a little bit slower. I think it took about uh, three hours maybe to print. What was the print speed? Sorry, I missed it. Uh, the print speed was 50 millimeters a second for 50? that. 50? Yeah. Oh, so man. we're using awesome. some Simplify 3D, okay. and you can get, of course, our profiles on uh, github.com slash adafruit slash... Printer profile. dash profiles. Yes. And um, I forgot the question. <laughs> it was a good one. Um, Here's another one we did on the M3D as well. You can see it's pretty Yes, good. this is one of the tests I, I was working on just to sort of get uh, the right um, sort of sizes for the tubes or spokes. Yeah, so one of the things that we, we did have stringing this on it, but it wasn't from um, like the retraction or anything like that. It was from the nozzle that was, uh, once it's printing and doing its little uh, vertical lift, mm -hmm. um, the surrounding material around it, um, it would you know heat up from the nozzle okay. and then go over. It was, it's the kind of stringiness that is 
super fine. So yeah. if you roll that video, you can see you um, we see used the hot air gun trick that yeah. we learned over order from uh, Angus at Maker's Muse. That's right. You can see that we just took the hot air gun and just lightly went over it. You can see um, it's a couple passes is all you need. A couple passes and I think it should go in slow-mo coming right up and boom, you can see right there, yeah. clears everything up. Um, Looks a lot worse Sweet. when it's up against a black background, but when you see it in real life. Yeah, it cleaned uh, it up quite a bit. Cleans it up really good. It wasn't that bad. And yeah, the default settings on the mesh mix is just excellent. I was uh, sitting there going, oh my God, you did like such a good job on, um, you know, sort of getting uh -huh. the, the perfect shell pattern on yeah. the back of the, yeah. the turtle shell here, and you're like, no, that's just that's all default. Just default <laughs> stuff, yeah. There's, a, so, of course, a lot of fine tuning you can do to the resolution, you can make it a lot more finer, but you did, I really like the defaultness of it. It really worked yeah. out really well. Um, so that's on the M3D, came out pretty good. Even better, if you folks have the Flash Forge Creator Pro, this is what you're gonna get. This is at 9150 speed. Um, just a little bit of overhanging here. You wanna get that in focus, huh? Yeah. yeah. Just hold it for me. And, um, yeah, the only difference here, folks, is um, the speed. The same, uh, same. Ex it takes about half the time. Same to print. temperature. You know, no heated bed, mm -hmm. um, no, no raft, supports, no, no supports. Raft. So this is a really good comparison test. You can really get some really fine-tuned, um, intricate designs. Um, of course, Alex Hatch. Yeah, this was printed on the printer bot Play. That was uh, Tuesday's time lapse video. Mm -hmm. If you guys are wondering, you can probably tell. But yeah. This is hopefully going to be a future project where we make an Adafruit I.O. connected um, NeoPixel lamp. Yeah. Perhaps. Maybe we can do something with some Siri integration. Siri, turn on my lamp mm -hmm. and it'll tell me. Yeah, Todd Trace just released, I think he released the, uh, the code for that. So mm -hmm. definitely check that out if you're interested in that. So that's it, folks. If you're looking to get some cool Vernoy type patterns, be sure to check out my Lair Belair. That is this week's Lair Belair. Pretty cool stuff. Very awesome workflow. Thank you. Yeah. Letting you guys know. If you guys improve upon the workflow or want to have any questions, let me know and I will take a look at it. Very awesome. Okay, let's jump into the shop talk since that was the Lair Belair and the prototype. It's, it blended seamlessly just like the Vernoy pattern, Pedro. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it did. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> Okay. All right, we got some, uh, can I do the, the Octoprint update stuff? Yeah, yeah, we got some quick tips for you on using Octoprint. That's right, folks. If you got Octoprint, make sure to update it. The cool thing about Octoprint is it has built-in notifications. So it'll tell you, hey, I got an update for this plugin. I've been liking this print plugin history, which gives you a nice history and keeps track of all, mm -hmm. and it keeps a log of all the prints you've made. So to do that, you can open up your Octoprint settings, come down here to Software Update, which is right under Plugin Manager, and there's a big blue button here. Um, check for update now, or once you uh, accept the uh, the update and the notification, it'll just take a little. Just give it a minute. It might take a minute or two, depending on your internet connection or just your give Raspberry Pi. Start of the uh, Octo uh, print. That's right. Give it a minute. Hit restart now, and it'll just reload it. It's awesome that it has a built-in updater. So, and of course, this is one of the benefits of being an open source uh, platform where you're able to let developers consistently update all their plugins. That's right. Get the community to help out on that. Mm -hmm. And this is where we really like this. That's right. So I think that's about it. If you guys are looking for more plugins, there are so many new plugins being added on the daily, so be sure to just keep checking on that. I think this is, uh, oh no, it's not repeating. It's just saying like you got everything up to date. So um, that's about it. There's so many plugins. Of course, you can check out the plugin repo for more plugins. Uh, here's a quick look at the history plugin. If you guys don't know about it yet, it gives you a nice breakdown of all the stuff you have. It gives you a little success rate prints per day, um, how much total time you've invested into your printer. I've put about 45 hours plus on the uh, printer about play there. And these are all my time lapses that I have. Time lapses is a built-in feature. And um, I've been doing a lot of testing with time lapses and things. And I wanted to give you guys a quick update on um, how to get the most out of your Raspberry Pi time lapses, Raspberry Pi camera time lapses. So. If you guys are wondering how to change the, the resolution of your Octopi webcam, check this out. I'll have this link for you guys uh, in the description. Uh, I actually asked on Twitter, uh, and Gina quickly responded and said, hey, you should check out here. This is how to do it. So how, did, how do I change my webcam resolution? If you modify the octopi.txt file, um, you get this, um, this text file where you have a bunch of different options. And the option you want to look for is right here, where it says, um, this is actually for the USB camera. So if you have a USB camera, you can change um, this parameter here. By default, it's 640 by 480 so that it streams really nice. Uh, you can change the frames per second here. 
And then if you have a Raspberry Pi camera like we do, you can change it to uh, 1280 or 1920. Mm -hmm. So what does it actually look like? Oh, beyond that, of course, you can, you can uh, come up here to settings. And I recommend playing around with um, or the webcam, play around with this time lapse bitrate. If you want a really high quality time lapse, up this, up. maybe up this to 10K um, or so, depending on how, how, how f I, I really recommend a Raspberry Pi 2 to get yeah. the best ad performance out of, res out of, out of uh, Octoprint. Make it look a little cleaner, disable the watermark that's on there by default. And, and, dis and disable the, the, the watermark, yeah. There's a, where is that? It's actually Looking right in, here. Yeah. See, so uh, right here, enable things. watermark. So just turn it off and you're good to go. Um, so there you go. Um, I will show you now a video of the time lapse that we got at 1080, 1920 by 1080. Um, of course, you want to play around with the position of your Raspberry Pi uh, camera. I actually have it mounted to the build plate itself because it's one of those beds that move. Um, but uh, the thing here is uh, you want to keep, keep track of your color temperature. Um, you know, mine's a little bit yellow, but you can, of course, fix that in post. This is just raw straight out of the uh, the Raspberry Pi. It does uh, make it uh, an MPEG-2 format, so you can yeah, play around and export it out to whatever. Uh, to get it actually in uh, Wirecast, our setup here, uh, I actually had to, to, to use QuickTime to bounce it out as a, um, as a ProRes, yeah. I think. ProRes, uh, what is it, 422? 422, yeah. Okay, or 422, yeah, something like that. So there you go. That's just a quick uh, little update I wanted to share with you guys about Octoprint and uh, the time lapses you can get. Pretty cool stuff. Okay. You guys still hear the <laughs> in the background? It's, it's cool. All right, uh, what, what's next on the thing, Pedro? Next up, we got Community Makes. Oh, Lots community of cool makes? Uh, um, okay. makes this week from All right. the community. Jump moving right along. So the Community Makes this thing's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. This is where we highlight some cool stuff that was uh, made. Oh, yeah, real quick shout out to uh, Augustin uh, Flowlistic, who put together all those lovely Pokemon low polygon stuff. So check him out. Follow so him on awesome. Instagram if you haven't already. Good stuff there. I'm sure you've seen his work. So the first thing we got is from Andrew Stout. Disrupt it yourself on Instagram. He's got a YouTube channel as well. Be sure to check him out, fo uh, follow him, and subscribe. He made an awesome little uh, design tweak to uh, the, the Pi Girl 2 parts. So you can see here he's got this cool uh, circular pattern, and he's using the triangle infill to get this really cool um, um, sort of pattern mm -hmm. etching look. It looks like it's etched, but it's not. It's just uh, the, the pattern and fill. Also, he's playing around with hot swapping colors, so he's got a really nice tip on how to sw hot swap colors. Um, and uh, the build's coming out really nice. Um, this thing looks awesome, so be sure to hit that like button on the, uh, on the Thingiverse post there. Really good stuff. Thank you, Andrew, for stopping by and sharing your awesome case. Another case here, uh, I'm sorry, I forgot your name, so let me go ahead and open that. Uh, Deshaun Taylor uh, also put together this. So everybody's starting to get their prints together and, and waiting, waiting on, on that kit. PCBs, yeah. Yeah. Um, so he printed this out. I don't know what printer w didn't offer any, um, any details on it. So if you guys are posting makes, please let us know just a little bit of detail. What filament, what printer, those type mm -hmm. of things, what you sliced it with. If you had any problems or not, it really helps us out because then we get to share and try to help you guys out, troubleshoot, and see if you can yeah. get better prints or not. Um, so yeah, cool color combos, uh, some nice blue, and I think that's pink or red, so it looks pretty cool. So shout out to you, sir. Uh, another one is from Scotty D. Last week we shared his project on uh, making a mount for the relay. This time he put together a um, sort of a universal uh, cable tie support clip, so you can mount this to different uh, things like wood or, or, or metal. Uh, use some zip ties there. So a pretty cool design. Definitely useful for you folks that have that need in, that are in desperate need of cable management. So there you go. Um, all the info is there. A lot, a lot of different info there. So be sure to uh, check it out and uh, give it a print if you need it. The last one. This one just came in right before the show. Uh, this is from uh, Vo. How do you say the name? Brad. Thanks, Brad. <laughs> Brad did a remix of a Raspberry Pi camera case, put it together with Walter's uh, tripod, which Walter did an amazing job on his tripod. He does a lot of cool mechanical designs, too. Yeah, this is a print-in-place tripod, so mm -hmm. all the uh, parts are together. That's right. A little bit of mounting screws there to get this going, but uh, yeah, this is going to work out really well. Cool stuff. I think it's the transparent PLA, it looks like. Pretty cool. Good stuff. All right, guys. Well, thank you guys so much for sharing your stiffs. 
Um, so if you guys want to get your project shared on the show, of course, you know where to do it. You just uh, comment on the show below or any one of our videos. Mm -hmm. You can also email support at adafruit.com. Yep. Good stuff. Got a lot of uh, entries in there. OK. So now we're going to do some Q&A. We're at 20 minutes. Yay. So Q&A, this is where we're going to answer some. We have some comments, and we've got some questions. So we're going to go ahead and answer those and take got a look at some good ones now. this week. Let's go ahead and start off with some every week. This is from the printer formerly known as. <laughs> I'm actually halfway through printing the Energy Sword, so this comes at a perfect time. I printed the, the blade pieces with Tallman's T-Glaze, and they look great. I'm having trouble printing the pieces, the handle pieces, though. I'm using Simplify 3D as well, but the handle pieces are so thin that trying to remove the supports causes the handles to split and break when printing PLA. I can't download the printer profiles that were posted because my printer is not included. Could you guys help me out and provide the settings you use for supports for the handle pieces? And thanks again for the awesome design. Yeah, so one of the things that's troubling us is, oh my god, you still use, or that you are using Simplify 3D. Yeah. And these are not thin when they come out of our, all of our printers. We've yeah. tested this on the other the makers, supports on the Phosphor. Solid. Yeah, it's about two millimeters for the thickness of these. And the thinnest part is about 1.5 millimeters. So your nozzle should be able to handle that. So then, um, the second part of your question is the support material, and that's got to be what it is. So if we jump over to Simplify 3D, I did not use the auto-generated settings for this. Um, one of the things being that it will um, uh, sort of fuse to the main handle part. So what you want to do is, if you take a look over here for the support, um, I'm leaving it at the default stuff of uh, 4 millimeters for the pillar resolution. But what I'm doing in here is doing all of my supports all by hand, and making sure that they're not too close together so that they don't fuse. Um, so we're um, leaving it uh, with a little bit of distance apart. If you actually let me go in there and oh, yeah, do sure. this. Yes, Pedro's, Pedro put this together. So you know, the one thing that we'd really like to see um, is the ability to, I think, do a save or something like that for the pillars. Yeah, so I'm gonna clear all these guys out. So for all the inside inside here, actually went in here and did about two on here. And this oh, is one of the things, okay. too, that I wish that Simplify would allow you to export STLs for all of these. Yeah, so we could just give the STL, and you wouldn't need to download uh, exactly, Simplify. Yeah. So you want to go in there, just do two for that. And let me do undo that. And then inside of here, I'm actually doing three layers. Oops. Keyboard layout is different. Inside yeah. here, you're going one back here, one there. And you notice how I'm leaving gaps between all of these so they don't fuse together. Yeah. And one of the things, too, that you're going to want to change when we go inside the options for this is have it print a lot slower when it gets to actually printing the support material. So you want to get all these corners oh like that. God. And you want to start forever. from the back. <laughs> yeah, you want to start from the back and then work your way up. Your way okay. Because the there's a lot of nooks and crannies that you need and to so get you into. Get each corner in like that. And again, remember, leaving. Um, gaps between that so it prints between each the pillars. pillar out separately. All so right. three layers for this guy too. And I'm just doing this quick so um, I fill all this in like that, not, you know, again, leaving a couple of gaps. So you're doing like three, um, three deep, I guess. And there, yeah. and there, and then you just fill that whole thing in there. One for the uh, slide Clip. switch, okay. one for the USB port, Wow! and right near the edge right here. This is and this will make it a lot more easy to remove. So you want to do one there, and then one on the outside. Right there. There you like go. That. You really got to um, keep rotating and orbiting around your part. Yeah, you want to make sure all your, you know all your key commands, because you don't want to move stuff around. Of course, yeah. you have an undo button. Yep, and yep. Uh, one of the features I wish they would have is if you did do an automation, is to have gaps in between it so it's not mm. fusing it all together. Okay. So we go if we go ahead and look into our process file, if we go into the support material, you can see here that the uh, infill support is at 30%. Oh, okay. The so density is only down to f uh, 50%. Okay. And if we jump into our other tab, we want it to slow down when it gets to the support structure under speed. We want that to be 30%, just so that it goes slower and doesn't knock any of these pillars over. There you go. And then, of course, when you preview, you always want to preview your print. I 
there's another design thing I wish uh, Simplify would change sure, out. Yeah. Start off selecting nothing so we can select. Because <laughs> we have, you know, so we have 16 have printers. Six, yeah, you have a bunch. Um, and then a bunch everything of Everything is selected, sub. so I always have to select none and then mm -hmm. just select just the one that I want. All right. So there's another um, negotiated word update. So when it uh, finished parsing that, you want to make sure that you preview and make sure that everything is, um, because, you know, the, the render, um, the, the preview of when you're uh, putting all this together might render uh, differently, and you just want to yeah, make sure right. that everything is in there and not like uh, you know hanging out over here somewhere. Yeah, no gaps or anything like that. Yeah, so you just want to preview that, and that is how you set up your uh, custom support structure for that. Do not use the uh, auto generate for that. Yeah, and one of the other things, just to show you that. You know, oh, even the here, inner sides, yeah. yeah. The inner side, you just how use many three here? Three. Okay, one there, one there, but one, one deep. There. Okay, one, one deep, deep, but three. Yeah, actually, near the end, too, not on the inside, because that'll be a lot more harder to dig uh, out. Okay. So you want to go in here and make sure you're a little uh, bit out. Okay, like I gotcha. That. Yeah, so you're not too deep you're in there. You're not digging in there, yeah. Okay. You cool. do the same thing. For and the, the render, outside. actually, it does render out differently when you slice it. So uh, exactly, you want to yeah. keep going in and out of your preview, but thankfully, uh, Simplify is one of the fastest uh, cheat code parsers. So about three for that one as well. And then on the bottom here. And again, we wish that we were able to export an STL with all yeah. the score materials on there. Um, so Simplify 3D, if you're, if, <laughs> if you're listening, we would love to see this implemented. Of course, you fill that over there. And that's what you want to do again. Cool. Well, thank you, Pedro. This is a super good layer by layer right here <laughs> on how to set up your energy sword handle. Yeah, because the uh, as we're measuring this with our calipers, yeah, this is pretty thick um, for uh, for the shell of this. Yeah, okay. overhead on that. As we were saying oh, before. Overhead, yes. Here you go, overhead. Yeah, so it's about two millimeters um, when you measure it with your calipers. That should be right here, and the thinnest part right here should be about one point five millimeters. Just want to make sure that your nozzle diameter uh, settings are correct on that as well, because they these should not be thin. At all. I think he was talking about the support material, but yeah. Yeah. Just to make sure. Oh, okay. Because um, we've had this come up too. Yeah, we have had that question where it's like, this is thin. Like for the um, Daft Punk helmet, they were yeah. saying that it, it, can, can we increase the thickness on it because it's, it's pretty thick, yeah. Because uh, it's so thin. Yeah. But when we tested it on our printers, we're using, you know, uh, 1.4 for the um, the thickness of the shell. Yeah, millimeters. That's pretty yep. pretty thick. <laughs> it could be um, I don't know. It could be a variable diameter, thing, like the diameter, your, ex your extrusion the multiplier, or your extrusion width. Yeah. There's a lot of different factors. So, mm -hmm. alrighty. Well, thank you, the printer formerly known as. I hope that helped you out. Next question is from Henry uh, HBK on the sword play the hangout last week. Hey guys, uh, you were noting that the high camera comes up close. If you mean uh, availability to cl uh, focus close, there is a poorly kept secret about the Pi camera, which is the camera is fully focusable. I'm using it in a real-time macro unit that can focus down up to one centimeter. The lens rotates like a normal focusable lens. It's just lightly glued in place, just ever so slightly with a small set of jewel or needle nose pliers and turn the lens ring. Once it's free, you can focus, sh shift focus to any depth you want. That is a great tip. I actually was I'm curious about that. I looked on YouTube and I did see one video, but it was the uh, the, uh, the the no, no IR. IR Pi camera module. So it's good to know that the the regular Pi manager uh, works with it. And I was kind of afraid to break it, but uh, if you're confident about it, and um, I'm going to give it a try and see, because I am using a, a, a 320, 230 uh, super fisheye lens on mine. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would like to be able to get a nice macro shot too. So there you go. Yeah. If you folks are wondering. It's a poorly kept secret. There you go. The, the secret's out. Thank you, Henry, for that tip. Next one, this one's from uh, Gib Merchanel. <laughs> Sorry about your name. Hi, guys. I like the Pi Girl very much, but I'd like uh, what I don't like about it is the touch and feel or the sound of the buttons. Is there a way to use different switches which have a nicer and smooth and more silent behavior, more like the original? At the moment, I'm hesitant, hesitating to buy this kit just because of that. So best regards, keep up the nice work and projects. Yeah, I feel the same way. After a, a little bit, it does get a little bit annoying. The buttons can be a little bit, uh, a little bit loud sometimes. Uh, but yeah, there are some options out there. So I just wanted to share with you guys a couple weeks ago, I, I, I showed you that there is something I'd want to check it out. 
If you guys uh, know how to order some parts from DigiKey, uh, there is a rubber type switch which has a little bit more a silent uh, clicky. Now, I think there's no click For to it. For what we think, because we haven't tested we it We haven't out. tested yeah. it yet, yeah, but somebody on Instagram shot, uh, gave me a link to this, and I'm totally interested. Um, so, if, so in the coming weeks, I'm hoping to uh, order some or, or try to get some out. I got to um, see if I can get that going. So there are options out there. Hopefully, of course, this is a surface mount component, but I'm hoping that it'll fit with the uh, in the right spot with mm -hmm. the uh, with the pins in place. So there you go. Check those out. So check those out. Okay. Next question is from consumed by fire thirteen on the seven inch Pi tablet. I am in the process of building one of these. Uh, to building one to put in my 84 Camaro. I am having issues with getting Cody on Jesse, and the touchscreen doesn't seem to work with Wheezy. I'll be using the, the car PC mod for Cody. Does anyone know how to get car PC running on Jesse? I'm stoked to get it finished, and thanks for the great vid guys. Um, yeah, so the multi touch uh, drivers were specifically, um, or the software, and it was specifically run by the Pi Foundation. So I would definitely uh, drop this question uh, on their form and see if there's any plans into getting it to work with Cody, or Jesse rather, mm -hmm. or Wheezy. <laughs> um, so let them know, or you can drop a, uh, a question on the Adafruit forms. Those are really good places to get these technical questions sorted out. And of course, search for them first before posting, as always, on forms. Yep, we always want to mention the forms since we do have full-time employees and yeah. engineers that their whole job is to figure out things on the form. So. Yeah, uh, that's your best places to look. All righty, next one is from Anton Verberg. Another approach, this is on NinjaFlex uh, uh, video. Another approach to uh, to print flexible filaments with Bowden, uh, Bowden tube printers, straighten the tube. Still able to move the, the, the head fast and be able to print uh, flexible materials. And then he drops a link to you imagine. I have the link here loaded. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. So we've actually seen this design when we went over the Maker Fair. The guys that were doing the Wasp Delta printer yeah. were using this exact same setup. So That's this awesome. is pretty cool. Yeah, this should work. Although um, this was on an old video uh, when Ninja Flex. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this was like two years ago. Yeah, it was. So um, with the advent of the brand new Cheetah uh, Ninja, Ninja Flex filament, you don't need to do this anymore. You, can, you, could, you yeah. don't have to do any mods or anything. That's right. And it works. Perfect. <laughs> That's right. You can um, you can print faster. You can better print a lot things. faster. Yeah. Um, so just chemically, it's it's better material. But if you really like that, and this is actually semi flex in, in three which millimeter, which has the exact cheetah has the exact same properties. The same hard, sh yeah. shell hardness. Shell hardness. So you, you don't need yeah. a heated bed. That's right. Um, this is still pretty cool though. Pretty if cool. you um, yeah. I guess if you wanted got to a lot use of semi flex, if you, you wanted to use regular Ninja Flex, this might work. So. Yeah. That's that true. might work as well. All right. So well, it's cool, cool that there's a lot of uh, designs out there for you folks. So check and that out if you're they interested. they may be working on some other stuff, too, that we can't talk about. So oh, it's too cool. late. <laughs> We're in trouble now, folks. If you don't see us next week, you know why. <laughs> next is from HJ Cat Tube. Hello and thanks on uh, last week's uh, layer by layer, one of the weeks. Layer by layer, the dual extrusion setup. Unfortunately, my printer has no template for Simplify 3D. Zmorph printer, so I cannot run the dual extruder wizard, and I couldn't find a tutorial for that situation. Well, um, you I did some looking around, and they yeah, I did. do. Yeah, uh, the Zmorph printer is uh, listed as a compatibility printer, but when I did the configuration, it wasn't listed there. Hmm. So what I think you might have to do is when you're in the configuration assistant, you're gonna want to make sure to click on other. There is an other mm -hmm. option, so you can select that and just. Custom, you know, add the right values in there, right? The right, um, the X, Y, and Z dimensions. Maybe somebody has offset. made an FFF file that lets you be sure um, to check and import search. the profiles. They yeah. have an active form. Yeah, so definitely sure check, check out the form, especially yeah, if this is what you're paying for. Mm -hmm. That's right. Support. Yeah, so that's yeah, what you're paying for. You've already paid, so be sure to, to ask them, and, and they'll help you out. Mm -hmm. um, they also said that too in there, and when I was digging around. Um, and you, another thing is to know is that the dual extruder. Actually, incredibly close to each other. I took a look at the printer. Yeah, looks like a pretty good printer, solid. Uh -huh. um, so just be sure to find out what the offset is. You might have to manually figure out your yeah. offset and do a lot of testing. So mm -hmm. there's just something to look out for. Alrighty. Next one is from Pam Hell. One kick, PL. On the Pac Pie Girl video. 
I have just one question. Is there an option to install this LCD screen in a Game Boy Color without all the Raspberry Pi stuff, et cetera? For me, it's just too hard to build everything from scratch, and I just want a better screen and a brighter screen. Thanks for the reply. I do not believe so. The um, processor is definitely not going to have the power to push yeah. that to the Perhaps. screen. Yeah. yeah, it's not a plug and play. No, it's the not. The reason why you have to use apply is because there's code running on there that's specifically yeah. talking to the screen. So that's right. So unfortunately, it probably won't work. But yeah. uh, if you know some assembly, maybe you can get it to work. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that's that's that one. Uh, George Graves is asking on the making a D-pad in uh, last week's Blair Blair. Uh, how long should one suffer with 123D before moving on to 360? I love how simple 123D is, but man, is it annoying sometimes. I was right there with you. Both me and Pedro switched um, a couple months ago, and we are so happy in, in Fusion. Yeah, it, imagine working in Photoshop with absolutely no layers, mm -hmm. no ability to name anything, yeah. um, not being able to turn off <laughs> Layers, so yeah. that's really what pushes over the edge when when our projects got so complicated that we're using like all the circuit boards inside there, and we can't look behind yeah. anything. There's no way to turn anything off. Um, when we were making cuts for things, we'd have to make multiple versions of the files just in case we needed to backtrack and you know grab something before we did a, a boolean on something. So yeah, yeah. if your project so is versions, getting there yeah. to where you need to do multiple versions, where you're tired of going back in old fo uh, files and folders and not being able to name anything. It might be remind me. <laughs> if you're working layers. on a project that's just one part, I you know stick with one two three D. It's just nice. Mm -hmm. I've seen some amazing things come out of it. Uh, James Burton's an example of like you could just stay in one two three and, and make you know just mm -hmm. single. If you have a nice mounts, workflow, right. you're able to do it. But. Yeah, but guess what, folks? We have a custom download link for you guys. Download it in the link below if you want to get Fusion three sixty. Get you a full free, unlimited free license. That's right. So check that out. Helps us out. Pretty good stuff. All right, George. Well, I hope you you, uh, you switch. Do the switch. The sooner, yeah. the better. <laughs> yeah, you got to get in there. And we got a couple of Blair Blairs for you, too, on, on getting started. And of course, check out Autodesk's YouTube channel, too. They have a ton of videos. They yeah. have a ton. Chris is asking on the 5 inch portable Raspberry Pi 2. I'm new to this, but is there any way you could just hook up an HDMI monitor instead? Absolutely. Absolutely. The Raspberry Pi has an HDMI monitor plug port. We Sorry. have a bunch of little mini. Uh, HDMI cables. We have like That's flat right. ones. We have like yeah. little thin round ones. And we have a lot of displays ones. too that, that are just the, they have an HDMI, HDMI backpack yeah, yeah. on it. So check those out. Um, and, and good luck on that one. Yeah. Welcome to the 3D printing DIY Electronics. Awesome place to yeah. be. <laughs> okay, cool. Thanks, Chris. Next one is from Tyler Durden from Fright Club. How much uh, would one of these cost? And could you add sound to it on the Halo Energy Sword? Let's check that out, Pedro. How much does it cost? Yeah, so anytime everybody asks that, you got to remember learn.adafruit.com. Here you can see the full step by step. And on the right side of the panel there, you can see add all to cart. Yep. So you can do go ahead and do that. And once you do that, you can go ahead and remove any of the items you may not need if you have them lying around. Mm -hmm. and you can see what the total to cost Under is going to be. $100. Yeah, so if you see about, oh, don't forget to add 10% off when you add. This week's coupon code, Pit which is boy. Pit Boy, which <laughs> is going to get you 10% off. Yeah. Okay. So, so good there stuff. You go. Yeah. Always remember, add all to cart and add then all to cart and put in your discount is. code. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're all variable. It all depends on what you have and what you don't have. So mm -hmm. there you go. All right. Well, thank you for the question, Tyler Durton. He is um, a mystery. Uh, Dan and Alexander stopping by asking on the sword pay, the hangout last week, uh, why aren't you able to power two separate boards with the same battery? Yes, so I misspoke on that one. You definitely can. Sure can, folks. So we go to that overhead. Mm -hmm. Here is the sound effects board with the built in um, amplifier. And mm -hmm. one of the reasons that I didn't add it was um, one, uh, time constraint, ran out of time. And yeah. two was at first, um, you know, when you're Designing all this, um, trying to get it in there. Yeah, it's like, oh no, I can't fit it in there. I feel like what if I put out. it this way? Oh yeah. no, then you can't like you know reprogram the the um, USB. Um, here's the speaker for that. I'm gonna go Where's somewhere. The go? Yeah, the battery goes underneath <laughs> there, so it's like, oh no, you know when you're you only have like you know a week or two to figure yeah. this out. And it wasn't only wasn't until like you know when we were setting up for the show we were like, oh yeah, you could have just put it up here. So oh, like this, yeah. 
like stacking like them that sort of like on that. top of each other. And that's assuming that you have enough clearance for that. Right. So the way that you would share power, Noah, you were saying is that yeah, you sure. So in the bottom of this, there's a there's a there's a um, there's power right here. There's power pads so you can wire into the bottom of that, and then just wire um, the bat and ground pins on there. I know it's so small, but um, you can see that there's a you can see the full pin out too on the learning guide. So you can totally power these two. I've done it with. Uh, the uh, the D20 project, mm -hmm. the ray gun project. Um, I think that those are the two projects that uses two different microcontrollers or type yeah. of microcontrollers and, and, and sort of siphons the power that way. Yeah, I think the idea that I was thinking was using two batteries and then um, you know how they do like uh, where they share two batteries together. Oh yeah, I think that's they what I was be, thinking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Nope. And okay. Yeah. But that's. Let's go back here. That's the way. Yeah. That I should have been thinking yeah, about that. Sharing power between the boards. So yeah, you definitely can do that. Um, all of the mounts for the sound effects board are on our uh, library for all of the parts, so you can get all the standoffs for that, even the the diameter for the speakers, so you That's can right. have that added to the um, other side, one of the sides of the handle, so you can definitely do that. All the fusion files are out there for you folks, That's so right. go ahead and modify and make completely remix this to make it your own. Awesome. So, super cool. That's what Thanks it would look like. Thanks for the question, Danon. Good one. Oh, yeah, here's a... Um, I, I'm already yeah. on that. Oh, never mind. <laughs> so you can make it uh, motion activated too. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, Nia, Nia rocks. Damn, I suck at these names. Sorry, folks. Uh, this person is asking on the Halo Energy Sword, which 3D printer should it get? Oh, this is one of those hard questions. This is a tough one, yeah. This is it like... really depends on w what's your budget, what would you like to use it for, mm -hmm. would you like to build it, or would you want something that's that you're not going to futz with too much? Would you like one that learn and stuff like that, so you have to be a little bit yeah. knowledgeable in G-code and things? Mechanically, um, it's it's kind of like asking, you know, what camera should I get, or what, what, what computer? computer should I get? It is a very difficult one to ask, so we need more data. So give us more data, and we'll let you know. Um, we've answered this one before with more specific data, with more attributes. So there you go. That's, that's, that's a good answer, I think. Joe is asking on the making a D-pad in Fusion. Any chance of getting the new D-pad posted in Thingiverse? Yeah, totally. That was It was launched with it. It's called D-pad uh, 2.stl. So this is the one you made with drafts. So it um, right. has that little hump near the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is already available there. I have the both options, and uh, you folks will be able to see it when you import it into your slicer, which one you want. Mm -hmm. I obviously want the um, the draft version, yeah. but if you guys want the flat version, it's there too. OK, well, thanks, Joe. Next one is from I uh, Kaluix, uh, asking about the Mac Mini Pi, Raspberry Pi. Is there a Pi B Plus or 2 model? We will definitely be updating this. Yeah, we definitely need to update this one. Really mm -hmm. cool one. So yeah, well, we're going to add it into our list. It's going to get done this year. Yeah, I think last it's year. been about two, two years. years. Two years yeah, years so it's definitely coming around that time to update all of the old projects with the, the newest new and greatest. Yeah. All right. John Paul Hopman asking on the swordplay last week's Hangout. Uh, you should add motion sensor to the uh, from the dice project to tie the animations and colors to the movement of the blades. You that is an awesome could. idea. You definitely could. We got the 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 um, all the code is there. Code is there. All of the libraries for the parts are there. Yeah. Uh, like we were showing before, um, ideas on how to actually mount, mount it, yeah. everything. Yeah. Just mount it to the other side. Make A lot sure of that times, clearances. This is the foundation, and we really hope you guys extend beyond it because we only got like a, a week or two, if that, to work on these project so we really encourage you guys to to uh, take what we got and just go nationwide with it yep. right. <laughs> is there just a wrap thank you for the question John Paul or for the comment rather the idea is a really good one next one this is a question from Khan which which field is that a rigid bot too I see on the left Rigid bot? Is that a rigid bot? Yes, yes it is a rigid a, bot a we're testing right it out now, yeah. no it's not down it's just um, um, some There's new some code. Yeah, we're, 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 we're working out through it. So it's a really good printer. It's pretty solid. I really like the printer. Uh, good quality parts. Um, so we'll be we'll be doing some more stuff with it. So hang tight there. We got a nice uh, nice project set for it. Next one is from Marcel Williams. I wanted to know how do you recharge the battery on the uh, bone conductor speaker? This was a really old project. About two plus years old. Yeah. And before we had the rechargeable circuits. So yeah, the we lipo were, battery again, is again another uh, one that we're going to revisit with some updated parts. I think with a bigger transducer, so we can have bigger sound. This is mm -hmm. a tiny one. So. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, so how do you recharge the battery at now? You gotta take it out and then use a LiPo. Yeah, use JST a rechargeable. LiPo, that, uh, yeah. yeah, something has a LiPo port on it. JST port. But thank you for the question, Marcel. We're gonna hopefully do something with that. And that, folks, is Q&A. Thank you, everybody, for asking questions, leaving comments. If you want to have your question answered, you can leave it below any of the videos, and we'll gather them up for a future episode. That's right. Um, I think that's it for the show. We got yeah, everything forget in. So. Discount code if you want to pick up any components to build any of our projects. Remember, everything, all the part, all the three printed parts are out there for free for you guys to modify. Yeah. Just gotta go pick yourself up some boards. You can use discount code Pitboy to get ten percent off. That's right. Expires at eleven fifty nine p.m. tonight. Does not work on software or gift certificates. All right, folks. So thank you guys so much for watching. We're sponsored by you folks. No venture capitals, no loans, no bank loans, mm -hmm. no sponsors, no advertising. That's right. We don't have to <laughs> hawk, <laughs> we hawk like razor stuff. blades or We talk beds. our own stuff. All we hawk are the actual components you need to bring these projects to life. So before we end the show, of course, we want to, um, again, learn at adafruit.com. Give me links. Learn at adafruit.com, step by step. A lot of time goes into uh, photographing, yeah. setting up, all the step by step. Sure. Paragraphs, take stories. Take the projects, <laughs> take the code, and make new stuff, too. Mm -hmm. Definitely encourage that. Um, th 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 three days of the blog, check out that out. <laughs> I'm running out of theme. Uh, you can follow myself, Pedro, and Adafruit on the various social channels. Check you know what, guys? Yeah. Uh, the lineage of show starts with Becky Stern. Starts on Wednesday. She has her show. Actually, it's Wearable starts, Electronics. Starts on Monday, maybe or. Oh yeah, you're late. right. That's an old thing because yeah. that's what it is like every single oh, day we'll, now. We'll loop back around <laughs> with that. Yeah. All right. Well, Becky's on every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Uh, last or this week she had Colin Cunningham co-host, and last week from Colin's lab. That's right. Get um, your wearable fix there. She reviews components, all the latest. teardowns, project workshops, win surprises. Get your questions answered. Awesome stuff going Definitely on there. Definitely check that out. All right, and then later in that evening, you got the back-to-back, a -back bot coming in, going cha As seen in Show and Tell, this is the Show and Tell show that we have every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. You can come and stop by, show off your project, show off your makerspace, show off uh, your Anything you're working on, yeah. Your lizard. We are there every your hamster. Hamster. Stop by, say hi. And then Ask Engineers, a full hour show of Lamar and Phil, new products, Raspberry Pi, Arduino, open source, and much much, much more. Top secret stuff going on. That's right. Check that out. You want even more top secret stuff? Watch what Lamar's working on. Right at her, right her home and her desk. From the desk and later at her. This is on like five different Ustreams, <laughs> my streams. We all stream. You see the behind the scenes, screen. it looks crazy. All it's the cameras crazy. just There's 60 cameras. I was like, we're pumping out like 20 videos as a all team week. a week. It's yeah. too much, folks. Let us know if we're making too many videos. And um, we'll make more. <laughs> uh, you know what? There's actually one graphic you don't have on there. No, I don't. The desk of Tony D. The desk the of new Tony show. D is the new one. The Raspberry <laughs> new show Pi just show. added. The Raspberry Pi show. Yep. He just had his um, debut awesome episode last debut. week. Yep. Yeah. Very, very fun stuff. So um, we'll have that banner on for next week. Yeah. Definitely check that out if you want to see live coding. That's right. The most awesome. Python. Python, Python. master. Yeah, yeah. Live video game Tame playing while Python. things are compiling in the background. Definitely check out Cat Tony. Cam. You can ask all questions there related to programming, and That's he'll right. get to those. It's on Twitch more, more so because he only has the bandwidth from Twitch, but be sure to check it out. Yeah, it'll, it uploads later to YouTube, but if you want to watch it live, check out Twitch. All right, folks, so thank you again so much for watching. We really appreciate you guys stopping by and saying what's up. So we'll see you next week, but until then, remember to keep on making. Bye, guys. And our